Start a fire in the snow in these conditions. Coming up, survival schoolhouse. Woo! Well, welcome to my office. Let's use our axe only today. We have a couple different options. We can get deciduous trees, which are broadleaf trees, or pine trees with pine needles. A couple different trade-offs, just depends. Pine trees sometimes split easier than deciduous. Sometimes it's more difficult to find a dry deciduous. Sometimes it's easier. It just depends on the area that you're in. But the general concept of what you want to do anywhere in the world is go to the inside of the wood if it's a wet conditions fire. So if it's the inside, that's where it's gonna be dry. So we're looking for one with bark on, that keeps a lot of the moisture out, and as you know, it's not as rotten. Check on the inside. Just like we did with the bow drill video, you wanna make sure that whatever tree you're getting is dead. And if you check the cambium layer, the layer that's actually living in between the outer portion of the bark and where the wood is dead on the inside. Even if it's a live tree, the wood on the inside is dead, but it's wet. But when you have the cambium layer, the actual growth ring of that year, you wanna check that and make sure that that isn't wet. So you can feel it with your hand, you can see it. A lot of times it's gonna be a lighter color. This one, definitely dead. This one, definitely dead. This one, alive. Let's look closer. You can see how this part of the tree is living. The cambium layer, it's wet, it's greener. This part's dry. You can even stick a knife that you have inside it and see if you get a nice sharp crack. Whatever cutting tool you have. Now, if all I have is a knife and not an ax, find something right around Red Bull can size. Not very big. So anywhere from your thumb to just small soda can size. So then you can split that up with your knife using the baton method. But we have an ax, we go for something a little bit bigger, something with not too many branches in it. So then it's gonna be easier to split. So this lower section can provide plenty of material uh, for my fire. Let's see if we can push this over. Nope. Safety first, everybody. Don't chop your leg. I've done it, it hurts. Clear out all the brush so you have some room to swing. See that tree right there? That's a widow maker. The top is broken off and caused a widow somewhere. That can happen when you're cutting down a tree. That's why I said, I always look up in my tree cutting video. That can happen on an extreme case. High wind days. That's why we don't want our shelter site around a bunch of big, large, dead trees. That can happen. That is not good. So look for that as well as, it lets a lot of the moisture in and can rot the tree from the inside out. Find something that is not a widow maker. Whew. If it's still raining, still snowing, get under the biggest pine tree or broadleaf tree that you can to get as much protection. There we go. Before you start chopping, clear out any overhead hazards that can grab your ax.
don't chop the dirt, make it into around forearm sized bolts of wood that we can split up after this. Make sure your area doesn't have too much snow above you. Once that fire heats up, it's gonna be dripping on you. Or worse, all of it falls on it and puts it out. Whew. When you're chopping a tree, and you're making your notch, make your notch about as wide as a tree width is. So we got about this much of a width, make my notch about that wide. Now my wood's not gonna immediately suck up all the moisture from the ground in snowy conditions, but if it's raining, you can help yourself out, pick up the wood, stand it up against the tree, help keep a lot of the rain off. When you split your wood, Put it down on another piece of wood so you don't chop the dirt. Chop it in the middle. I'm gonna quarter it up, look for the best pieces and be able to split up. Uh. Wanna make sure you have enough wood for a platform and a brace. A platform being something to keep it up off of the cold, wet ground, which is gonna steal your tinder's heat. So you got your platform, which is going to be right about a foot in length by a foot in width. And then your brace, that is so when you put your wood on, it doesn't smother your tinder. So a brace is important. You want your brace about the size of the tinder you're using. If you're using Vaseline and cotton balls, make it about that size. If you're using a softball size material of natural hair-like and fibrous material you find, make it about that big. Make it about forearm size, softball size. Let's make big sticks into smaller sticks. Keep your wood organized on some runners that I made on the ground. Just a couple sticks, keep it up off, Cold wet ground. Look for my good straight pieces of wood. Now, you want to be careful about using an axe for too long with gloves on. Sometimes it makes it more slippery, especially when they're wet. Split it down small with the axe, and then turn your axe around sideways, lift up, bring the wood down. Start at the end and then make a little stick of wood. Break it down into pencil. Pencil size, thumb size, and then the rest for your fuel. So again, use your best stuff. The stuff with out that many knots or no knots. The wood, that will split up nice and long for you. That's what I mean by best stuff. My blade is facing away for safety. I'm not jamming it into the dirt. Big sticks into smaller sticks.
if a piece isn't splitting well for you, go on to a different piece. Save that one for fuel or thumb. Save the best pieces for the small stuff. Don't kneel in the dirt. Transfer that wet ground onto your clothing. If you kneel in the dirt, your clothes will immediately disintegrate and you'll be left with no clothes. If you have knots in your piece of wood, put your edge right on that knot and attack that knot, split through the knot. Otherwise your wood will want to break off at that spot. Another reason you want a nice sturdy platform is to make some feather sticks and scrapings. You can do this with a knife, you can do it with an ax, and it depends on the wood and how well the shavings are gonna be coming off the wood. Depends on how decayed it is. If they don't wanna to stay together on a stick like this one is, you can make a bunch of little shavings to start with and then just light those up. You see it's a little bit crumbly. You can look at it. If the piece of wood they're using isn't working for you, go to a different piece. Just try and make these as small as possible. Cut little edges off. Just like the feather stick video. Notice I'm stabling it in my waist so I can use two hands so I can stop before and I'm not cutting my hat. That's the downside of the tree I'm using right here. It's not making nice tinder for me. But we'll get her going. We'll do it. You think I can do it? I hope so. If it's absolutely pouring rain, put this in your shirt pocket. Protect that from the weather. But that's a reason to have your shelter built first. You can do a lot of this stuff inside your shelter. So split up with your ax real quick or whatever material you have. Bring it inside your shelter where it's dry and continue prepping up your materials. Now I can go down even finer, make another type of tinder, heartwood scrapings. Take your blade of whatever you have, make sure it's nice and smooth. Make some more feather stick shavings or wood shavings. Make sure it's nice and smooth. Hold it real steady. And then 90 degrees to the wood, scrape down and in. Make tight scrapings. If you get a gouge in your wood, cut that off because smooth is good. So you get these fine little shavings that are gonna light up real easy with our metal match. Here's our materials prepped up. Have a good handful of each, pencil size, thumb size. I separated them out with sticks to keep them organized. And here's our fuel size. Let's light her up. We have our platform real solid. We want it solid so you can put your metal match into it and get it going as well. So you're not moving it all around. Our best small stuff ready to go. I'm gonna put that on my back side. First handful, second handful. Put my tinder on my platform. Now it's not on the wet ground. Make a little nest. and scrape in a hot spot. Work those shavings in, let them start to get going. Once they start to get going, put your first layer on. Notice how it's not smothering it. As close as you can to the flame without smothering it. I can start holding my second handful on. Start getting things drying out. I lay the first part on this way, lay the second part on the other way, making a pyramid fire lay. 
Get your next handful. Lay those on once the fire starts to come through. Woo! If you need a little bit more oxygen, you can lift up on your brace right here. More oxygen is gonna come underneath or on the sides. We have our pencil size. Now we gotta go to our thumb size. Again, pyramid fire lay. You can come in on the other side. Lay it on. Put some on the other way. Once the flame's starting to go through, it needs more wood. Then we can go to our fuel size where we can start laying some fire lays on top, log cabin, teepee, starfire, whatever you want. Right there's the log cabin. Woo! Principles to start a fire, any conditions imaginable throughout the world, it's all in the preparation. Again, remember, I can't stress this enough, if it's raining too hard, if it's a tropical type environment, you might need to have a shelter first, some type of covering over the top of you whether that be made with banana leaves, whatever's gonna work for you. So have your shelter made first a lot of the times before you get into your fire. Then you can stay out of the elements, work on this inside your shelter. Until next time, keep surviving. Now what you wanna make sure you do, if it's real dry conditions, if it's a little bit dry, if it's the summertime, if there isn't snow on the ground, is you want to scrape all this down to the bare mineral soil, the soil all the way down to the dirt. So then you're not going to light up all this stuff right here and it could travel underneath the whole layers and then start up somewhere else. So just putting a rock ring around this isn't going to stop that fire from going underneath those rocks through this duff area, this dirt and stuff area underneath all the ground and then light up somewhere else. So you want to scrape out at least three feet all the way around the edge. Right here, in these conditions, I'm not worried right now. I'm going to put it out. Put out one of the legs of the fire triangle. Heat, oxygen, and fuel is what is needed to start a fire. We had our heat. We had our metal match. We had our oxygen from the air. We didn't smother our tinder out and our nice dry fuel. Scrape it out with a stick so then you're not melting your boots. Woo. Don't spray a hot coal right in your face. <laughs> Survival schoolhouse keeps surviving.